Greetings, beloveds. Welcome to everyone who is joining me now. I am Galactic Shaman Aurora Destiny Raven. We are going to jump right into this week's um, transmission because there is a lot to cover. Welcome to your energy report for July 24th through the 30th. So we're going to start right away with um, the vision. (laughs) This vision actually happened um, Sunday morning. Um, I got woken up at 3.03 a.m. on a Sunday morning and I saw this ruby reddish purplish uh, light coming in. It was purple but it had like a very like rich almost like intermingled with with red uh, but very purple like a deep deep purple energy coming in and um i just intuitively knew that i was going into vision i was going to scry and so i laid back and i began to see this light pouring and it was coming and it came from the west and Again, I intuitively knew it was coming from the west direction, and I saw the California coast. Um, But I'm not saying that it only hit California. It was just coming from that direction. And it hit the coast of California, and then it kept coming down, and it went past like Sedona and Flagstaff. And I'm in Arizona, for those of you who are unaware. And it started coming in my direction. But as I said, it wasn't just California. It literally came like Maui. It was coming from that direction. Alaska, coming from that direction. This violet, red, deep ray. And it came um, across the sand. And I could see the mountains. And I could see the red rocks in Sedona become redder. That's a word. (laughs) a deeper red um and then i saw it cascade down and go onto the sand and then the sand had this red color it was no longer tan it was like a i can't even describe the color it's it was a color that i've never seen before i don't feel like that color is on the planet if that makes sense it was like an ultra ultraviolet reddish color. You get what I'm saying. It came down, and as it was coming down, I could see it sort of merging with um, where I was in Phoenix. And then I saw a deep blood red. It was like a blood red coming up from the earth. And it sprung all the way up and merged together. And it exploded. And I heard blaze the violet flame. And I mean, I still like I have chills on, in, my, in my body right now from even the experience and just even saying that the way I heard it blaze the violet flame. <laughs> it was very prophetic. Um, And of course, uh, other things transpired that I will not share because that was my own personal process. But what I took from that was that we are entering a stage of transmutation. What is happening right now is consciousness is raising. And there is a lot of things that are being unearthed as a result of that. So a lot of things are coming up within the collective. And if you thought you heard things before it's really going to come up now. And this is not in fear and this is not in this is not some oh my gosh you you got you can't believe the planet that you're on. It's blah blah blah. This is not what this is about. It's an understanding of in order to get to that high frequency, you've got to raise yourself up. Let me tell you something. And I've said this before. Any person that you see that has truly done the work, I'm not talking about these, you know, spiritual narcissists. I'm talking about someone that has actually really done the work. Trust me when I tell you, 
They have come through the pits of hell. They have dragged themselves up just because of the planet that we're on, not because of them personally, right? In their own personal process, yes, but we are on a very dense planet. And in order to raise your frequency and raise your vibration, you have got to pull yourself out of some shadows. And this is not pointing the finger at anyone. Whatever it is that you've gone through in your life, as far as someone doing something to you, that's not what this is about. This is about your own inner demons. This is about the things that you have had to face. If you see people now in a higher light, if you see people truly say, I love you and mean it and you feel it, if you see people pushing light from their bodies, it is because they have come through the pits of hell trust. As a collective, we are experiencing that. We are experiencing that peak of the dark night of the soul. Because we go through many dark nights of the soul, not just one. But when you get to that space where you can identify it, there's a difference. So that if it arises again, you know how to face these shadows, right? But in the midst of it, in the middle of it, right? You're in it, right? And you've got to move and shift yourself past it. That's what the collective is seeing right now. So what's needed during this time, this is the space that we hold. And when I say we, I speak of those of us that have already done enough of the work, not all the work. You're not finished until you leave the planet. That's the rub. Nobody is above it. Doesn't matter who you are, how long you've been doing this. Check yourself. But those that have done enough of the work that we can now hold space for the rest of the collective, not to do it for them, but to blaze the flames, the internal flames, not the fires that you see burning in the forest, although those can be interchangeable and connected, right? This is a higher elemental energy, right? This is your lineage and birthright. As light beings, you are able to transform your light into flame. And this is what's needed right now because we are shifting into a lot of Challenging times, but also a balance of good times. There are many people that right now in this energy, they're going to run, they're going to hide, they're not going to want to face a lot of things. But there's nowhere that you can hide. No mountain will hide you. That's what those prophecies mean. It is not something that is coming to get you. It is you yourself and the things that you must face the healing that must take place. Not just the healing of a group of people, the healing of the entire world is coming. Now, we are in the midst of it. It has been occurring for quite some time. It's been building up. And now the cup runneth over. It is time to heal. And in doing so, in healing, if you've ever experienced a true healing, not talking about some glittery spiritual Hollywood healing, where you go to a retreat and you get pampered and bathed, I'm talking about that ugly ass cry. I'm talking about that curled up in your bed, holding yourself. I'm talking about that rocking back and forth. I'm talking about that, (laughs) that type of healing. I'm talking about that screaming, that calling out, why? Why is this happening? All of those things. I'm talking about that type of healing. I'm talking about the pissed off at the world, pissed off at yourself until you come into your completion, until you truly know who you are, where you have peeled the layers of the false self. I'm talking about that type of healing 
It is upon us, the planet. And just because you've done that healing, please don't get it twisted. You will have to heal some more. Because we're a collective. You've got to hold the line. So if you're around someone, right? And this can be your close friends that you're equally sometimes doing the work together. And they may have a day where they are down and you're up. You got to hold the light, hold it, not to do it for them, but to remind them, even though they're down there, this is a time that they can heal because they know where to go. They see the path through you, through your light. They can see. Even if it's a little small spark, they can still see it. Right? This is our responsibility as healed or healing beings. And this is not about some, oh, you're not good enough. Like that, throw that away. You are on a dense ass planet and there are karmic patterns and ancestral stuff and a whole bunch of the planet itself is going through a lot. So unless you are in a bubble where you cannot be affected, whatever is made, the bubble is made of, where you cannot be affected, you are. So this is why it's important that as you are holding space for others, you are also doing your own work so that you can heal as well. And one of the ways in which you can do that is with the violet flame. Now, I've been working with the Violet Flame for many years. For many years, I learned the invocation and I was doing the mantras and I was, you know, doing the, um, the, the chants and, and it worked for me. And it was really powerful. And I know a lot of people who have used it and it's been really powerful for them. And in 2021, I was gifted another level of the violet flame by Saint Germain. And when I was gifted that Reiki, when I was gifted that attunement, it was a powerful process. And as I did it, I was instructed to physically give it to three people. And at that time, I was isolated. It was a self-isolation. I was in Georgia and I was isolated. So I wasn't around anyone. I didn't really go anywhere unless it was the store or places like that. I needed that isolation. Of course, I was still working with clients. And of course, you guys saw me on social media. But I was isolated for the most part, unless I had to go and do grid work, right? I was isolated. So the only three people that I could give it to at that time was my sister, my daughter, and my eldest son, Those are the three that I was guided to gift it to, right? For many reasons. I have two younger, uh, two other younger children, and I just was not guided to pass it on to them. And I did that. And once I did it, they said to me, now hold that, work with the light, work with this energy, and you will know when it is time to open up to attune others. So I've been working with this energy personally, with clients, with myself, on my daughter and her most recent um, accident for 2021, 2022, 2023, now 2023. So two and a half years of working with this Reiki. This is a Reiki that I, it, I can't even explain it. The process that you go through, the light that you see, the the way your body becomes inflamed, it's a powerful thing. It's not like, you know, no disrespect, but it's not like Usui Reiki. Because to be to be quite honest, the Usui Reiki that people are learning is extremely watered down and, and colonized, right? If you go to a a Japanese practitioner or an Asian practitioner, it's a very different Reiki that you feel and experience than in the Western world. That's just fact. These intelligent energies that 
I began working with were way more advanced. They were higher. When you are working in higher, um, anchoring in higher light, there's a responsibility to your own self. You'll burn your suit out. I've talked about this so many times that when I do initiations, when I do all those things, I am atonements, I got to pace myself because I'm not trying to burn my suit out. I need it to ascend. I want to ascend in my body. It's possible. I know what people say, but it's possible to ascend in the body. And that's what I'm, I'm working on doing. And I help people do that as well. So this isn't some, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to do some symbols. No, <laughs> this is some really advanced, as esoteric as it gets work. And so, and the reason why I'm saying all of this is like, I'm not like tooting it up to be this big thing. I'm saying it because I am so excited that this is something that I can offer. And I'm also so excited as an intermediary channel, right? As a bridge. But also too, that our collective is at the frequency and vibration where we can, as a whole, as a collective, we can begin to anchor this light. And let me tell you something. It's not just me. And I know that for sure. It's not just me that got this download yesterday or around this time period. It's not just me that they're communicating. There's plenty on the entire planet. We we just don't know them, or maybe I do. I, I don't know. I haven't done enough research to know who's really talking about the violet flame right now, but I can tell you it is something that is very prevalent in the collective right now, and there's a reason why, okay? Now, I'm going to go into uh, Venus retrograde. So Venus is retrograding in Leo, right? So we've got Venus retrograding in Leo, and we've also got right now the sun in Leo. Those two energies are extremely influential as to all the other stuff that's going on. There's so much in the astrology. Again, I'm not an astrologer, but when we have key points that stand out energetically, it's what I tune into. Right now, having Venus being retrograde in Leo, there's so many things that are going to come up in terms of relations, relationship, the relationship we have to our bodies, the relationship, the relationship we have to the collective and how the, the collective is viewing. It even goes back. They were showing me mom and dad. You know how they have that saying, mom is your first love and daddy is your first protector, that kind of thing. These are the patterns that many people without even knowing and realizing and understanding these are the reasons why your relationships are molding in the way that they are right now, right? And so Venus being in retrograde is going to show you why you love the way you love. If you've got any toxic traits, if you've got any of it, anything that is coming up that is not serving you, that is not of the highest light. This is about releasing the karma. So you will see all the karmic patterns in regards to relationship with Venus being retrograde in Leo. So it's something that you really, really want to take a look at. And this is why it's important that as we're doing this healing work, we are blazing the violet flame. Okay. And now I want to talk also about Aries and Libra. These are the two nodes that have switched. Um, And what came up was healing chaos. Listen, this is about past life stuff even. This is about past life things. Remember, this planet is extremely old in terms of the fighting, the the back and forth. This is galactic stuff, if you can believe it. If you can't, go with the the, the, um, his story of the world, of how how long we've been incarnating on this planet that, you know, they they have divulged to the uh, mainstream. Even those thousands of years of his story shows you that there was war, battle, chaos, confusion. All of that was happening. It is a healing time. And like I said in the beginning, when you heal, it's not 
rainbows, butterflies, and pretty and oh, snuggly. No, this is that ugly ass cry. This is that punching the wall. This is that screaming into a pillow. This is that real healing. This is not some dancing around and frolicking with the fairies. And yeah, you may need to go and find them occasionally. But right now, we're on some healing-ish. And we've got to balance it, right? Because it's Libra. It's Aries and Libra. we got to balance it. Bring, we're bringing balance. It's healing chaos. We're bringing balance. We're not healing to fall further into shadow. That's a misconception. You don't heal to become your shadow. And I've said that so many times and I've had to say it because, you know, that's just sometimes what people do. You don't heal to become your shadow. That's not it. So we're not healing in 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 this Aries energy. This you know how Aries are. Aries is the god of war. <laughs> so there may be some stuff coming up. Even within the collective, you know, they're, they're um, saying war. Oh, we're going to go to war. We're going to go to war. We're going to go to war. It's all tactics. I mean, I would really, really love to share what I know, what it was really, really going on. I'm going to do that over on my Patreon because I, I just won't do that on this platform for many reasons. But of course, you all know that there's a lot of tactics going on. And, you know, whatever you see in front of you, know that there's 20 million things going on behind the scenes. Whatever they're sharing with you, that's nothing. That is a distraction. There's 20,000 things going on behind the scenes. So, you know, I don't know how credible it is to listen to these news reporters and all this other stuff. And, and you know, some people just jumble all the news information around and then they keep spreading it out. The best thing that you can do is tune in to the higher self. Ask higher self the questions. And this is how you do the work. Build the relationship so when higher self answers you, you can trust in that answer. I've built such a relationship with my higher self. I literally, higher self helps me find freaking shea butter in Target. <laughs> it's gotten to that point where I literally, I don't put my notifications on. I don't do anything. Higher self will tell me, hey, go on uh, Instagram. Somebody's trying to message you. Hey, go check your email. You've got um, some important emails in there that you need to answer right away. Things like that. Like build that relationship with higher self. Then you don't have anything else to worry about. But right now we are definitely moving into a healing time and it's 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 not the healing that is promoted in the the wellness package <laughs> okay it's the healing that you know you hear like the 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 drums beating and <laughs> and the the natives singing <laughs> You know that you're just getting ready to get transported and all the ancestors are about to come out and show you some things. <laughs> That's the type of healing that we're getting ready to do. And remember that those of us that have gone through this before, we've got to hold space. It's important. And this leads me to remembering our soul family. Remember that we are all soul family we all come from larger cloisters. We come from over souls. The all is the one and the one is the all. So even all this stuff that's going on, I love when people go, oh, my father and my mother and the most high and the, what? That's spiritual hierarchy. The all is the one and the one is the all. And it's funny because even those entities that you are worshiping and calling your father and your mother, they know that the all is the one and the one is the all. There is no separation. Your dad and my dad are the same. <laughs> Your mom and my mom are the same. Because I'm mom and dad. I mean, it, it kind of blows your mind. And I get it. And this is not, again, in a superiority way. Like some people are like, I'm a, I'm a goddess. It's in a bow down sort of way. No. This is about particles, particum, particai, you know, stardust, particles of the one, everything that you see, the nebulas, all of it, it's all source. The prime creators, all of it, 
the councils, the galactic emissaries, the this, the that, the secret space guys, the all of it. It's all source. So we're going to start remembering that because what has had us separated has created traps for our aspects, right? And we, as the lower forms, we are the lower fractals of higher self. That's what that means. You're going to build a higher relationship with your soul selves, your soul fragments, your soul family. That's going to look like many different things. It is going to look like contact. It is going to look like more channeled communication, more cosmic telepathy, right? It is going to look like those things. It it can also look like, um, you know, ships landing and, and things happening and all of that. Just be mindful of how it looks to you, right? Tune in. This is, again, the work that you're going to have to do to connect with the higher self. I'm seeing three, four, five on the clock right now. So follow the steps. Follow what you're prompted to do. Trust in that. And now I want to talk about grid workers assembling. Uh, they showed me the poles shifting. <sighs> Listen, I, I don't know if you guys remember when the poles shifted. It was a long ass time ago, a long time ago, around the times of Lemuria and Atlantis. And there were some more, some times that there were like slight pole shifts after that and prior to that when the Anunnaki, when the, I'm sorry, the Nibirubians came. There was a lot of things uh, that when the the reptoids and the dinoids were here as well, um, when the Hyperborneas, um, you know, there, there were clear. (laughs) There were different time periods where we had pole shifts, uh, slight pole shifts. It wasn't, we didn't have complete pole shifts. We've only had um, two. I don't necessarily want that timeline. I, I honestly, after remembering it, which took me a long fucking time, took me about six months of just get trying to get that out of my head and trying to get to a neutral place of that memory. There's a difference when you soul retrieve, I mean really soul retrieve. It's not something that just comes in and out and you forget it. It's like remembering a memory of like your childhood or something like that. It's in there. Okay? Anyway. We don't necessarily want that. However, we may have a slight pole shift. We may have a slight and a slight I I use those words very loosely. A slight pole shift is going to look crazy. Will we be protected? Yes. According to our soul's agreement. According to if if a soul has decided that this is how it's going to um exit the planet, then that's how it's going to exit the planet. But if you if that was isn't a part of your soul agreement to exit that way, then you won't exit in that way. And that's the only thing I can say in in regards to that. I cannot speak for every single soul on this planet and how they choose to incarnate or to leave. Okay? So, um The purpose of this conversation, I'm sorry, I got kind of sidetracked, Uh, but the purpose of this is really to um, assemble grid workers, grid workers, like those of us who feel a strong connection to the earth. And when we walk, when we go into a certain place, we can feel the energy of the place. We can feel the ley lines running, the dragon lines running under the planet. We can feel all of that. We know intuitively where the tectonic plates are, right? We can feel the electromagnetic frequencies coming, surging up. Those of us who, with our own guidance, go forth to certain places and do the work that have, you know, they try to take you out, that all this stuff happens. You get challenges, you get infiltrated, all that stuff. It's a part of 
it's a part of the work. It's, it's like a freaking a form of the initiation. Trust me. You lose friends, you lose um, spouses, you lose all of that family goes. And not, let me, let me switch that word, cancel, clear, delete. You shift out of a lot of realities. You shift out of a lot of timelines and you um, move away from certain people, places and things. But what you're moving into, if you look around you and pay attention, what you're moving into is others, others who share a like frequency. What is likened to itself is drawn. So if you find yourself um, with less friends, family, and all of those things than you did maybe six months ago or a year ago, look around you because there is a new frequency of that gathering. We are a collective so it's not it's, you're not meant to stay in solitude by yourself. Solitude is for certain periods of time, but you've got to come in out. Remember that balance, right? It's not about um, we we're, we're getting rid of duality to have neutrality, okay? And in order to do that and to live in that space space of neutrality where we're not constantly fighting duality or thinking about it or even bringing it up because the all is the one and the one is the all right but that that's that takes work and that takes time so when you find your like-minded tribes and like-minded individuals it's time for you to go out to these sacred places and to do the work and there's many different ways that you can go and do things. For example, you'll have a certain group go and maybe they may do some crystal gridding. And then you have another group go and they may seed some light language in there and put some sigils in there. You may have another group go and they may uh, communicate with the spirits of the earth and have that energy in there. You may have uh, some groups go and all of that is together, which is a very powerful thing. Um, and I myself, I'm, I'm looking to do that soon. Stay tuned for that. Because I would really love to to really shift some energy on this planet. But that'll come along when it's meant to. But if you're guided to do these things and go to these places, go. If you If it's just the two of you, if it's just four of you, if it's just six of you, if it's just you, go and do the work. You may go and, and you know, happen to come into alignment with someone else who's there by themselves just by chance, right? There are no such things. It's cooperative components. You will be led to where you need to be because it's necessary because you're needed. Okay. So keep an open eye for that. And lastly, I want to talk about the Lionsgate portal opening. Uh, now, I said last week, if you tuned into that um, energy report, that the energies were already coming in from about the 21st, 22nd, when the, the Leo season started. Um, the Lion's Gate is not some fictitious uh, spiritual um, woo-woo. This is an, an astrological and astro, uh, this is astronomy, right? This is a, an alignment that happens that you can see with a telescope, right? You can go to NASA and all those other places, Hubble and all of that, and you can see the alignment of Sirius, right? With Earth and Orion. This is the lion's gate, okay? We are at the opening point, so the portal is opening, meaning this, all of these star systems, meaning all this star energy is coming into alignment to be at a uh, zero degree angle. And the peak of that will be on the 8-8, but it opens up. Um, this year will open on the 26th. Normally it's around the 26th to the 28th that it will open. This year it's going to be on the 26th that it, it opens. <laughs> when that portal opens on the 26th, listen, listen, this energy is not just about opening up for the good. This is an energy that opens up that you can harness, okay, in any way. So when that energy opens up on the 26th, shields up, 
shields up. Shields up, ones at the ready, all of that. If you know how to work with light, if you know how to push intelligent energy through your body, get it going on on or before the 26th. Work with that energy because there's a lot that's going to be coming through your field in terms of positive energy, in terms of upgrades, downloads. Many of you will have face-to-face interaction with your soul family, higher self aspects. However, there will also be a lot of tried uh, psychic attacks, all that stuff. Listen, um, the best thing to do for psychic attacks, you can work with crystals. Um, Pyrite is wonderful for psychic attack. I know a lot of people use it for manifesting and all that stuff, but it's a really good crystal for um, psychic attack. Lapis, also good. Those two in combination. If you've ever seen me with my mala beads, I have a pyrite and lapis that was gifted to me by um, a fellow in Spain that spirit Uh, connected us. He saw me through vision and uh, reached out to me to give me uh, these beads. It's a very strong combination to use when you're doing this type of work. So if you're somebody just in general, really right now, especially right now, work with these crystals. But if you're someone that does a lot of uh, spiritual work, you definitely want to uh, wear your pyrite and your lapis right about now or keep them uh, in your surroundings. You should definitely have loads of crystals in your house. This is not just about some fad or trend. Crystals are helpful. They will assist you. We use crystals in every way. It's so funny that mainstream will make you seem like, you know, like you're nuts or you're in you're on in some cult because you you wear crystals however they'll use them in their phones or on their lasers and all that other stuff like come on it's very important right now to work with with crystals um especially as this uh this time period comes upon us okay so july 26 is going to be a really really big time it's the first day uh, of the opening of the Lion's Gate. And there's a lot of things that um, are going to be unfolding that day. You may see a lot of things in mainstream. <clears throat> Again, as I said, shield, shields up. Whatever shielding techniques that you have, whatever shielding that you are you know, in alignment with, use it. There's plenty of shielding uh, techniques that you can use. You can definitely come and go check out my website. I have uh, two shielding techniques. One is, one is a very advanced one and one is a little bit more common that everybody um, has been introduced to for years and it works. Use it, use it, use it, use it. Use it daily in conjunction with a lot of other things. Don't think you're going to put the shield up and then go out and be doing some craziness and think that that's going to protect you because what is likened to itself is drawn. So you can shield up all you want, but if you're you know, doing uh, darker things or you're still pulling into addictions and doing all that stuff, then you're going to more than likely be a like frequency to some very crazy stuff. So you've got to clean up. Uh, your energy, clean up your environment, clean up your mindset, all of that has to work in conjunction with these shields, okay? Um, Now let's get into the oracles because I'm excited. I got a new deck. This week we are using the Pleiadian oracles. I really love this deck. Shout out to my Uh, one of my apprentice and my fellow galactic shaman sisters who... um, put me on to this oracle deck. It is amazing. It is by now age imagination and the author is Flo uh, Karuna. I hope I'm saying that right. And the cover artwork is by Bruce Harmon. Some of you may know Bruce Harmon as a um, one of the older galactic artists. He does a lot of amazing artwork and there's a lot of amazing artwork in this um, oracle and it's so powerful i really really love it so let's get into it so monday and tuesday we have creativity coming in and i really love this oracle i love how it depicts these two hummingbirds 
um, hummingbirds are very spiritual um, animals. For a shaman, the hummingbird is uh, the ancestors and those who take the long journeys, the resilient ones. Um, the hummingbird, he uh, has such a small body, um, but makes such long journeys. And it's remarkable to witness and to see. And this is a testament to um, how resilient we can be in our creativity, how we can shift and mold the energy in the way that we wish for it to go. Some of you may be feeling a little stagnant right now um, because of these retrograde influences. We also have uh, Neptune in retrograde, remember that. And the planets in retrograde just means they're not actually going backwards. It's just that we perceive them as such. And so our energies kind of slow down in one particular area um, versus when it's when they're going direct, right? And all of this influences us. I, I'm so sorry that you don't understand that yet. It's written in all these books for thousands of years. We're not making it up. This is not spiritual woo-woo. <laughs> it's science. Anyway, so right now you may be in this period where you feel like um, your creativity is a bit stagnant. Although um, I honestly feel like the minute we hit that serious stargate in that 7-7, it, it shot us up because that's what serious is all about as well, right? That creativity. Um, but this is in perfect alignment with where we are right now vibrationally as a collective. Because as these old things are going out, guess how the new things are going to come in? We are going to mold the energy to create the new. Many of you are already doing that. You've already done the energetic work and you're just waiting for it to manifest into the physical. So this is also about the creations that you're currently working on, tweaking those, fine to, uh, tweaking them, right? But new creations that can be coming in for you, you really want to um, harness this energy. The Lion's Gate is all about that as well. Harness these energies that can be harnessed for malevolent or benevolent. Um, you know, it's up to you. Harmony is important at this time while you are harnessing these energies. Remember that balance point, right? Shift the way that you see things. You may have some uh, dormant patterns that are coming um, up for you to look at, right? Like you may have been the type of person to do something one way and for a long time that way worked for you. So you just went into autopilot. Guess what? Time to transform and it's okay. This is the evolution of your soul self. Like you are expanding. So embrace that through the creativity, through things that come through, right? This is... um getting that heart wisdom, tapping into the heart. Uh, what is it that Greg Braden talks about when the head and the heart are in um, uh, alignment? That's when the true magic takes place. That's what it's all about. Um, there's also something new that can be coming in. Um, this is the time to get playful, right? I know earlier I talked about the healing, but this is where I say you can go and visit with the fairies on occasion. So Monday and Tuesday, as you're creating, creation happens in play. The healing is the clearing. As you clear, you create. Clear, create. That's how it works, right? So we spiral up, not loop. So Wednesday and Thursday, you have lightning boy. So there's a story that goes, uh, the Pleiadians had a boy in the Pleiades who was struck by lightning. He died and came back to life. And when he came back to life, he could vision. He was a seer. And he foresaw a cataclysm coming to the village that he was in. He went to the villagers and he warned them. And of course, this is the Pleiades. This is not like Earth. 
Um, so it's less dense. And so they believed him. They were a little apprehensive, but they believed him. And they moved the entire village. And sure enough, there was an earthquake that took out the lands there. And the story goes that um, the reason why they trusted him is because he trusted himself. He trusted the visions that he received. Um, he trusted the path that he walked. Um, he wasn't sitting and worrying about so much that he went through this horrific thing and he almost lost his life and all that stuff. That happened, right? But he didn't stay in that pain body. He didn't stay in what happened. He shifted out of it so that he could realize his gifts were not for him. Many of you will be in this position of realizing that you're getting a lot of visions, a lot of prophetic um, communication. I love that this is coming in on Wednesday at the start and opening of the Lion's Gate where we do have the possibility uh, to anchor in higher consciousness. That's what the um, Lion's Gate is all about. This has been going on for centuries that people would tap in to the energies that were coming in at that time and be able to shift their consciousness, not just for themselves, but for those around them. There were a lot of, um, um, you know, prophets that would pop up around that time or and prophets that would do a lot of things to gain more of an awareness. This is about you raising your frequency and raising your vibration so you can connect to the higher self and the higher mind and receive the communication that will not just assist you, but the collective. Trust in the guidance that you are receiving. Trust in the move forward. Uh, trust in um, even the experiences that you're having. They may be very challenging, but you're being qualified for greater things. Words don't teach. Life experience does. In order for you to have others believe in you, you must also believe in yourself. And the only way you're going to believe in yourself is if you go through the actual experiences yourself. So you can say, I literally went through that. I know what it feels like. I know what that looks like, right? I've had this experience. So yeah, there it goes. So um, Friday, you have two cards coming in. You have passion. And uh, before passion, you have uh, Pakal's tomb. So let's talk about Pakal's tomb first. Pakal's tomb is uh, the god Pakal. And uh, Pakal is a Mayan god. I use that word loosely. He was a Pleiadian, okay? He was an, a Pleiadian incarnate. Um, of course, the Mayans are known to be Pleiadian incarnates as well. And I'm talking about a small group of the Mayans. Just like every civilization, there's, you know, there's a lot of difference going on within these civilizations, okay? Um, and so people like to group people together and say, oh, the, these were all like this. They were all evil. They were all dark. They were all bad. Not all color, race, gender, not everyone is the same. There are some people that are hateful and racist and, you know, they don't understand light and love and oneness. And then there are other people that know the all is the one and the one is the all. And they don't see um, skin color to separate. They see it to know that there is diversity, but they don't see it to um, put themselves on a pedestal or put anyone else on a pedestal as well, right? So the <clears throat> the Mayans, the galactic Mayans, let's just call them the, what they are, the galactic Mayans were a very um, advanced civilization. Some of them were um, uh, refugees uh, from Atlantis. Again, not all the Atlanteans were um, technology driven and, you know, some of them were very spiritual. You had priests in Atlantis uh, uh, and priestesses, but we didn't call them priestesses back then. It was just priests, male and female. Um, you had those that were connected that held a higher light. And so these particular um, refugees from Atlantis uh, the Mayans, the galactic Mayans, they held a lot of codes and wisdom. And even if you go to Mexico right now, you can tell, you just feel that land and you can know, you see pictures of it. 
uh, whatever it is, you can know that that land is definitely uh, ancient and sacred and there's a lot of um, ET presence in the land, right? This is about you trusting in um, <clears throat> your connections, first of all, with the Pleiadians. We're all connected to the Pleiadians and to the Pleiades um, itself. Uh, you know, that's a whole different story for another day. Um, <clears throat> but in doing so, in realizing that you do have this connection, there's also um, this realization that we are stepping up, we are leveling up, okay? So remember, this is coming in for uh, Friday, uh, and this can this energy can come in way before that. I'm just tuning in to the way I set the intentions for the oracles, right? So um, you'll notice that you're tapping into more of your macrocosm, cosm, but in order to do that, you've got to first tap into the micro. Now, the, what they're showing me is the vision of, um, they're doing like skits of all these superhero movies and, and Marvel and all that different stuff. If you notice, they have a commonality. Whenever somebody gets their super abilities turned on, not the ones that are born with it, but the ones that get it turned on, like Spider-Man when he gets bit by the spider uh, that has that super venom, all of a sudden he can see a fly going by and he can see how fast the, the wings are flapping and he can see the lint and all that stuff. We have the ability to really tune in to the details of what's happening in our experience. Not enough to drive us crazy where we're completely obsessed and looking at every little intricate part like, oh, why didn't this turn 90 degree angle, all that stuff? No, but more so realizing and understanding that all things are connected, right? Paying attention to detail. That's what this oracle is all about. And of course, there's also a message of um, doing some research on the Galactic Mayans and on uh, Pakal's tomb and all of that stuff. For those of you who want to go a little bit further, um, that may have a little bit to do with also the grid work that's coming up. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, lean into that for those of you who resonate. But this is about breaking patterns. Uh, hidden messages, doors opening, obstacles removed, clear guidance, inner wisdom, double check contracts, business agreements. You may find that an opportunity or opportunities are like coming at you top speed. Really pay attention to um, the offers, the invitations. Make sure you're reading everything. It may be great, but you want to make sure you're not locked into something or, or you're not being, you know... Um, given more less than your feared share right so be really mindful of that this is a time of magic um the answers are in front of you review the details this is all that the oracle is saying so tune into that and then also on friday you have passion coming in and um <laughs> i love that this comes in with that card with um uh patal's Pakal's tomb, um, because this is about you really following your passions, following the inspired action, uh, tuning into the information that you're receiving, thinking about what in your life brings you joy as you're paying attention to these details. What in life is truly bringing you joy, really making you come alive? How right now is your life joyous and full and pleasurable and passionate? Really tune into that, right? Think about yourself uh, in this experience and every little part of it, even sometimes the healing parts, how how much um, better that they can get over time as you are doing this work more and more and more and more and more. It doesn't mean you avoid it, doesn't mean you bypass it, but you know how to shift out of it, um, you know, faster uh, without, you know, pushing it under the rug. Right. This is also about nurturing your soul and uh, just really feeling into the love frequency that is surrounding you. This is about being passionate and creative. Again, this is about so that creativity is, is flowing, especially we're in the uh, Lion's Gate now. Uh, come Friday, we're in that energy. So really um, take it to heart um, and learn how to work with these energies. Um it says, ask yourself, what soulful um, nutrition do I need at this moment, right? What feeds your soul? 
what lights you up. Um, additional meanings is enjoyment, play, fire, freedom, letting go, and no worries. I love it. And then also on Friday, you have passion coming in. And um, <laughs> I love that this comes in with that card, with um, uh, Patal's, Patal's tomb, um, because this is about you really following your passions, following the inspired action, uh, tuning into the information that you're receiving, thinking about what in your life brings you joy. As you're paying attention to these details, what in life is truly bringing you joy, really making you come alive? How right now is your life joyous and full and pleasurable and passionate? Really tune into that, right? Think about yourself uh, in this experience and every little part of it, even sometimes the healing parts, how how much um, better that they can get over time as you are doing this work more and more and more and more and more. It doesn't mean you avoid it, doesn't mean you bypass it, but you know how to shift out of it, um, you know, faster uh, without, you know, pushing it under the rug. Right. This is also about nurturing your soul and uh, just really feeling into the love frequency that is surrounding you. This is about being passionate and creative. Again, this is about so that creativity is, is flowing, especially we're in the uh, Lion's Gate now. Uh, come Friday, we're in that energy. So really um, take it to heart um, and learn how to work with these energies. Um it says, ask yourself, what soulful um, nutrition do I need at this moment, right? What feeds your soul? What lights you up? Um, additional meanings is enjoyment, play, fire, freedom, letting go, and no worries. I love it. Now, Saturday. I want to talk about what's coming up for Saturday. This is not going to be for everybody. But this is something that we should all practice, and that's forgiveness. And I'm definitely not pointing out. I've learned over time to forgive a lot of, for myself, things that I've done that haven't been in the highest light, and not saying I forgive myself and then go back to doing the same bullshit, because that, that's not it. But truly forgiving myself and learning from those mistakes and not repeating them. But also to learning how to forgive others clear. <laughs> Learning how to forgive others is really important. For yourself first, first, first and foremost, forgive yourself. This, the way you talk to yourself, the way you treat yourself, all those things, but definitely forgiving others. It's very important. Um, I've had to like, something that came up recently for me was the connections that I used to have with, um, you know, galactic beings that I've said it before, this is a bureaucracy. So you will communicate and connect with certain uh, galactic commanders and um, emissaries and councils. And there's different councils. There's malevolent councils, okay? There is malevolent councils, just like there are benevolent councils, okay? So you, you can communicate with beings that um, help you to a certain extent. They help you with a, a hidden agenda. And it's up to you to say, oh, you know, oh my gosh, I got duped, I got bamboozled. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I? And you know, you can beat yourself up, and you can hate them, and you can call this one an asshole, and all that stuff. And yeah, maybe they they did do some asshole stuff, but at the end of the day, it got you to the next step. It got you to bring an awareness to even the fact that they were lying to you or they were manipulating you, right? Because you're on the other side of it now. Right. And in hindsight, it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I was in that energy. So what is like into itself is drawn. Of course, there are parts of me that are going to connect with that because that's what I was in and I needed to shift out of that. You've got to be um, vulnerable enough, humble enough to know when you did something that, you know, wasn't in the highest light, that wasn't the best for you maybe at that time, but you know you can reach higher, right? And also too, if it was done to you, there is a level of you that needs to forgive. Forgiveness is divine. And, and that's not a cliche. It truly is. Because then you realize that all things are purposeful. All things, all things. And we can't just compartmentalize what is um, 
purposeful and what is not. It is just expansion. Okay? So we truly need to practice this forgiveness. Um, try Ho'oponopono. Uh, there's so many things that you can use. <laughs> the violet flame. Like, I, I know I keep saying this, but it's coming up in the energies for a reason. Blaze the violet flame. This is about, um, you know, communicating to the self that it is okay to release these things in order for them to be transmuted. You do that through the forgiveness. You can't hold on to things and ex expect that you're going to ascend into the highest light. No. That's why there's all these galactic beings fighting with each other right now because they haven't forgiven. Don't think because they're, you know, evolved, te technologically evolved and all that stuff. Not, a lot of them are not where they would like to be. There's parts of them that would like to evolve as well. Everybody is going up. Everybody is ascending up to a higher level. You at this stage being, you know, in, in the, the dense world, being in the third dimension, don't sell yourself short. There's a lot that you can do from here to assist even the higher beings, right? It's a unison. You work together. But even forgiving at this level can help things. It sends ripples and waves even into the higher dimensions. I said it before, there are higher selves and aspects of me that don't get along. They don't like each other. My Nibirubian Anunnaki does not like me, the Syrian. Um or the Lyran. My Lyran at one point didn't get along with my Orion. Like, <laughs> shit goes down in the galactics. That's just how it is. These councils that we talk about, this galactic federation, federation of worlds and all that stuff, why do you think they had to come together and create those things? Because they've got a whole bunch of crap going on too that they need to work out. Right? So nobody is above it. But at this level, it's about you where you are vibrationally and how you can shift it, right? So this is practice some forgiveness. What you can do is, and I've, I've had this, um, this uh, practice in regards to someone that you, um, you, were, you have an issue with energetically, right? And this is your, the way you perceive them, not them, because we're sovereign beings. So we're not going into anybody's energy field. You call forth the perspective, the way you see them, call that forth, that version forth so that you can heal it. When you heal the perspective, it doesn't mean that the, cha the person is going to change, although oftentimes they do, right? Because you're, you're, you're no longer with that cord, um, but it's up to them. But it's you, it's the, the cord that you have attached to them, right? Rip it out at the root. You cut a cord, it grows back. Like, come on. Rip it out at the root. And how you do that is through the energy work. You do that. You, if you burn something, right? You set blaze to something. You think it's going to grow back? Uh, I don't think so. I've never seen something catch on fire and grow back. It goes ashes to dust, to dust. That's it. All right? That's why. So work with the violet flame. Um, if you'd like to come and attune with me. And work with that energy. You've got to work with that energy before you can go and pass it on to anyone else, right? So you come and attune with me, work with that energy, use it, utilize it to um, forgive, work through those levels of forgiveness with people. If it's not the violet flame, then use other tools. There's plenty of tools out there that you can use to forgive. This is a healing time. So if it's coming up for you come Saturday that some things need to be healed, Cycles need to be broken, um, uh, shifting. Um, if someone is transitioning, you make sure you, you, you let it go and it doesn't, you know, then they, they transition and it's like, oh, I never got a chance to. No, you can do it. Even as they transition, you can still say, I, I, I release you, right? Um, this is first and foremost about self-healing and then all others, self-love. Be mindful of the anger. See, this forgiveness is coming out with this, um, uh, the Aries nodes, um, the node switching to Aries and Libra. So be mindful of Aries, that God of war provoking, right? And, and then this is about you attaining freedom, okay? Um, I, it, I find it no coincidence that um, I put on my green... Um, 
um, calcite. Work with any green crystal you have right now. Work with the heart space. That'll definitely help you heal, okay? And because you can't make this stuff up, <laughs> Sunday Star Center comes up. I, listen, I, I just love it. Because I didn't even look at these cards. Like, I just pulled them. I asked for, okay, can I get a card for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like that, okay? Then I did the whole writing it all out. Some of the things that came through, like the vision that came through on Saturday, and then other things came through, I mean, Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Um, and then some things came through today, earlier today. So it didn't all come through all at once. It's just now how it works for me, okay? The ley line stuff, all that stuff came in after I pulled the cards. I, did, I just got these oracles. I never pulled this card before, so I don't know what it is. I just know that it says Star Center. When I go and I read it, it's basically talking about grid keepers, grid workers. <laughs> I love this. So if you're being guided to travel, you're being guided to go to sacred places, um, to educate yourself before you go, so that when you go to these sacred places, you know what to look out for, you know what to do. You're not just simply going to sightsee and be a tourist. You're going to be of service to the land. You're going to connect to the lines. You're going to activate and work with the grids so that we can assist the planet as it goes through um, this global shift, okay? Um, I'm going to read from this. It says, when the star, star Center's card arrives, we, your Pleiadian guides, are proclaiming that you have a star mission with land or community. Can't make this stuff up. Your sole mission is to live and be at one, uh, at one of these star centers in order to embed your unique teachings and activations to others. <laughs> oh, my God. Now is a good time to invest in real estate, take opportunities to travel, and be open to invitations to live at a star center. Another meaning of this card may represent that it is an ideal time to change locations and move to other parts of the globe. Yo. Whatever it is, you are being guided to arrive at one of these star centers for the betterment of your earth. The star centers are considered basically major grid points, ley lines, um, sacred. It could be sacred site. A sacred site, you can live, like I know someone that got relocated to uh, near the tour. He literally got relocated there. I know someone else who got relocated to another, near another sacred site. You don't have to literally be plopped on top of it, but you can be close enough that if you get in your car or some type of transportation, you get there. That's, where, that's what it calls being stationed. You can be guided to go there on vacation. Whatever it is that you're being guided to do, it's for a reason. There's a lot of shifts happening. We need all hands on deck. Those of you who resonate with being grid keepers, this is not going to be for everyone. According to what I've been told, there's only 10,000 grid keepers on the planet and only 1,000 are doing the actual grid work. So there's um, 9,000 people that are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, according to the higher dimensions. Mm, you know, no shade, no pressure. <laughs> so... If you're being guided to do this, or if you're already doing this, you may find yourself going to a lot of sacred sites. It's time for you now to realize why you're at the sacred site. Like I said, you can go there and put crystals. You can go there and speak light language. You can go there. You may go there and get a whole complete download and know exactly what you're supposed to be doing when you're on. Like I've had places where I go and I'm on complete higher self autopilot. Like the higher self just jumps into the suit 
and I'm just like doing all these things. And then they're like, yeah, you did this and you did that. And I'm like, really? Yeah, it can happen like that. But it's important that we're doing this work, right? This is a global mission. This is about also teaching, right? I, I take this card to heart because um, as I'm shifting into this role of now anchoring in the violet flame and attuning others to anchor in the violet flame, like it's necessary. We got to be in different parts of the world blazing the violet flame, truly blazing it, not blazing it in worship because I've seen that part of it too, which is insane. Blazing it through us as the conduits, right, of this source light. Okay, that's it, everybody. Thank you all so very much for joining me. I know these videos are a little longer than other videos. Um, it's about 45 minutes, maybe an hour or so with me. But you've got to realize that this is an energy report for the week. And there's a lot to uh, really cram into one hour. And I really want to just bring all the information that I have and share it with all of you so that you can take it and utilize it in your realities. So if you take one day out of the week to come and tune in and just listen to the report, after, if you want to come back and just check in, I do that from time to time myself. Um, I do leave up timestamps, those like chapters that you can go into after the live stream, a couple of hours after the live stream, or at least the next day after the live stream, you're able to come back and go into maybe just the Oracle reading or, you know, to catch up on the week, to see where you are vibrationally or whatever communication that comes in. That's the purpose of me doing all of this. It is for, uh, you know, your expansion and to assist you as I'm giving this information to you for you to utilize it in your experience, not just to, you know, sit and tune in. I can truly appreciate you all tuning in. But there is a purpose to all of this. And so I hope that you take this information every week that I give it to you and you utilize it and apply it to your um, realities. If you'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one session with me, maybe you want to expand on your life path and your soul mission, you can definitely book a session with me. Or you may be curious about your galactic lineage and you want to come and do an Akashic reading with me, you can definitely do do that as well. Um, I have since started offering some more bookings in terms of um, shamanic extractions. I already do shamanic illuminations, uh, healings, all of it. So if you're interested in any type of sessions with me, you can head over to my website, sweetspiritoflight.com. The information is always in the description. There's a ton of new activations in the quantum healing shop, lots of wonderful journeys and activations. Definitely utilize them, especially right now. We've entered the Lion's Gate or at least we will by the time you are tuning into this. Um, so you're more than welcome to utilize the um, Triple Infinity Abundance Rights. That's the Laren Triple Infinity Abundance Rights. It is an amazing process that I even use from time to time. I definitely share it with my apprentice and anyone who uh, purchases that activation can tell you that it is a beautiful process that will just quantum leap you um, into abundance and feeling that energy of abundance before you can bring those things into the physical world. So that's available on the website. And I would definitely check that out for this month. And there's a lot of amazing things coming to the website to assist all of you on your journey of expansion. So definitely check that out. And most importantly, as of now, I am offering the Reiki Ray of the Violet Flame. It is an amazing energy to work with for healing, for transmutation, for 
happiness, for joy, for expansion. I mean, there's so many wonderful things that you can use this ray for. It is a very powerful tool, um, healing technique to assist you. And I will be atoning those of you who are guided to come to me for this process. You can definitely head over to the website and check it out. It's in bookings. This is a one-on-one -on -one session that comes with a PDF for instructions on how to work with the ray and also how to attune the ray to others when you are guided to after working with the ray for at least a month uh, I would say at least a month or so you will also receive a nurturing meditation uh, to help you work with this ray it's not just okay I attuned you goodbye figure it out. <laughs> I sort of help you and work you your help you and guide you through this process because I am a teacher and a mentor and it doesn't matter if you have one session with me or many um there has to come something of it in in terms of teaching because that is a part of my design here to assist all of you. So all of that and more is included in this process so if you are at all guided to come and expand your consciousness in this way with me and anchor this light into yourself and into the collective then come over to the website sweetspiritoflight.com go into the bookings it's in bookings go into the booking section and scroll all the way down and you will see the violet flame and um I am booked up all for this week. Next week, there's some slots open and moving forward. So this will be something that I will be offering now and moving forward. So if you're at all guided to, come and join me. And I think that's about it. I love you all so very much. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you all next week. Enjoy your week. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you're new to the channel, subscribe click the thumbs up everybody please if there is 16 people listening i want 16 thumbs up if there's a hundred people listening there should be a hundred thumbs up please support the video support the channel as we climb and rise um to call in more soul tribe definitely share the video you have my permission i love you as always sending you gratitude love <sighs> as I blaze the violet flame and calling in the light. And so it is. I'm feeling high. Thank you.